There is a mystique associated with quantum mechanics. It's a formalism in search of an interpretation. We now have the tools to peer within the postulates the great masters put forward. When I think quantum theory, the image that comes in my mind is this old black and white photo from 1927, the fifth Solvay conference outside of Brussels. 29 scientists, more than half of whom go on to win the Nobel Prize. We have Bohr, we have Einstein, we have Schrodinger, we have Dirac, all debating the theory of everything under one roof. It's that spirit of free discussion that we try to recreate here at CQCS. Around 1980, Tony Leggett, a theorist, started to ask the question, can we apply quantum mechanics to macroscopic systems? And a number of us, including myself, found this a fascinating question and we decided to attack it experimentally. And we did some experiments on superconducting circuits, explicitly something called a Josephson junction. The junction exhibited quantized energy levels. I think that this was a first demonstration of quantum mechanics in a superconducting circuit, and that has now branched out into various other kinds of, su of non-superconducting devices that show related effects. The center today is an amalgam of speakers of the language of quantum mechanics. What distinguishes us is that we have all the dialects here under one roof. Some of us speak atomic physics. Some of us work with electronic circuits that cool down to refrigerators like this one. Others think about the cosmos and strings that make it up. What unites us is that there's one theory for all of these fields. Quantum science is growing in a completely unanticipated way. We've uncovered a whole new set of interesting and un unexplained phenomena and new ways to control quantum systems. And there's a new interface between experiments and theory. And it's only in the context of a center like this where we can really make progress and move forward, where we're not constrained by different funding paradigms and artificial boundaries between the disciplines. It's one quantum mechanics. A lot of excitement comes from people talking about uh, their own puzzling problems within their own field and realizing that uh, their colleagues uh, may actually face similar questions and they may have uh, already provided interesting answers that can help revolutionize your own field and vice versa. My work is in uh, cold atomic physics. We make uh, cold gases of atoms. Roughly we make the coldest stuff in the universe and then we try to figure out what it does. We have now access to a few new uh, things uh, at a level of complexity and a level of uh, cleanliness that we never had before. One of them is um, creating simulations of new types of materials that have been hypothesized to exist and we can create the experimental platform that makes them come to real life. And having created that experimental realization, we then give it back to the theorists who can now dream even further. Throughout my time doing research in Dan Stamper Kern's group, we came up with some proposals for measurements we'd like to make having to do with quantum optics. And we found that they would be difficult, if not infeasible, in our cold atom systems. However, in talking to the Siddiqui group, we learned that it might be possible in superconducting circuit systems. So I'm very excited to transition to Irfan's group and try to bring along these ideas for new measurements to a lab where I can actually realize them. The concepts that we develop in one field are universally applicable across all fields of physics. And the communication within the center is precisely meant to uh, foster this type of uh, interaction and uh, cross-fertilization between different uh, areas. Quantum information science really sits at the intersection of a few different fields, especially working with superconducting qubits, which are a physical system that we print on aluminum and silicon, so it interacts with the condensed matter community. Uh, but it also deals with science that has been more traditionally studied in the atomic and molecular optics community. Now we're starting to be at the point where it's, it's dealing with material science, uh, with engineering, with scalability issues. So now we're sitting not just at the intersection of fields of physics, but even branching out more broadly into other fields of science as a whole. So it's a very exciting time in the field. Learning is about watching. And it's a joy to watch students learn about quantum mechanics and teach us about quantum mechanics. One of the things you learn about young students that you work with in, in a lab in a university setting is that they have the potential to become very much more than you yourself can be. 
and you have a chance by pushing them in that direction, you know, to be greater yourself, I would say. They're the conduit with which the ideas go between one field and another in a meaningful way. Whereas, you know, uh, high level discussions among senior scientists only go so far. But when, you know, a really fresh young mind with their entire skill package goes and plants themselves in another laboratory and that kind of exchange takes place, that's, I think, where the real, um, the real novelty of, of, and that kind of synergy occurs. One of the most exciting things for me as a physicist is to think that debate that we're having with graduate students on the board, that may be the next page in the quantum textbook. It's that liveliness and it's that liveliness of experiment coming together in real time that drives all of us to study quantum mechanics at this point in history.